Okay, so I just wanted to do a quick tutorial showing how I have mounted S3 locally and I'm using that to plot Chia. So I have an EC2 instance here. It is a very small instance. It's called a T4G.nano. Only has half a gig of RAM and it costs about $3 a month Linux on demand. I chose a very small machine because we don't need a large EC2 instance. We need a lot of storage. And I decided, let's see if we can get away with the smallest instance size and then the largest storage size, which would be S3. So, practically speaking, at least. Um, so the way we accomplish this is with a tool called S3FS-Fuse, which I've installed on the machine. So I'm logged into the machine over here, and I've mounted a drive called S3-Drive. And you can see it's, it's basically seeing this as a 256 terabyte storage location. And you can see up here, I did some testing where I did plot to S3. So I just want to walk you through a few steps you can take to do that. So first of all, if you're new to EC2, um, you would create this instance. And like I said, I created a T4G.nano. And the volume doesn't even need to be 100 gigs. Um, you could choose 20 gigs if you wanted, or even 10. Um, it doesn't need to be large at all. The key thing is that you probably want... Um, fairly performant drive. You could get away with a magnetic, but it's going to be kind of slow. So if you choose GP3 with the base of 3000 IOPS and 125 for throughput, that's a pretty good starting point. We're not going to be plotting to the 100 gig drive, we're plotting to S3. And you can see metrics on this, and you can see some of the times that I plotted. Um, I got pretty good uh, bandwidth and read throughput um, coming off of that drive. So here is the S3 bucket that we're going to write to. I called it Chia Buckets, and we have no objects there right now. And we installed um, yum install S3FS-Fuse is how you do this if you are in um, CentOS or Red Hat or, or something like that. So once you mount the drive, um, you put your IAM cred credentials into a file. So to set that up, you go to IAM and uh, create a user and attach a policy, in this case, Amazon S3 full access. We're using an AWS managed policy. And then we have security credentials. So I've created a key. It's currently active. The secret key is not visible and irretrievable, but I have that saved in a file on the local machine. So. That is saved locally on a machine here that S3FS-Fuse is referencing. So if we take a look, I've mounted that position, mounted that, I have that mount point, and there's currently nothing there. But if I touch, if I echo test into a file called test.txt, and then I ls locally, I have test.txt, and then if I go over to the bucket, and I refresh this page, I should see test.txt. And there it is. So if I delete it here, I should see it deleted uh, on the local machine. So we'll permanently delete the object, close this page, and we have no objects in the bucket. And if we ls over here, it should be gone. And it is. So what happens if we plot here? So let's just uh, up arrow to the command which allows us to plot. Chia plots create. In my case, I just CD directly to the location that I want to plot and Chia plots create. So if I hit enter, I'll wait for it to start. And you can see that it is currently plotting in S3. Now this is currently going to cache locally and then upload to S3, but by now we might have some data in S3. So if we refresh the page, we have objects, but a lot of them there are zero bytes. So if we sort by size, we still don't have any data transmitted yet. But we do have the files named there. So it's a start. Um, but what I have seen is that um, it's, it's not transferring fast enough to S3 from the local. So what I'm actually doing is filling up my root volume, which is also my temporary data volume for plotting. 
and it's causing this machine to crash. So 100 gigs isn't enough to temporarily store locally before it's uploaded to S3. So there's a timing adjustment that needs to be made there. And I haven't worked on that yet, but that'll be the next step is to basically slow down the plotting such that it can be written to S3 more easily and more quickly. Um, so if we go back to the bucket and refresh, let's see if we have any files here yet that contain non-zero bytes. Nothing yet. And one other thing to note is that the, the bucket properties shouldn't be, you should set up your bucket such that it's the cheapest um, storage tier. So here are some considerations. This document here has some pretty good uh, considerations, but when you're using S3 as a file system, there's a delay when performing IO, such as creating or moving new folders and files. So we already know that based on what we talked about before. Performance depends on network speed as well as distance from S3 storage region. So S3 is not atomic, so we can't modify files. They have to be completely replaced and that's not a big deal in our case, um, but files are transferred via HTTPS, and again, there's going to be a delay. Each object has a maximum size of 5 gigs, but that's not a problem because each temp file that I'm creating in S3 is about 50 megs. But remember that S3 does charge you for I.O., so this could really increase your cost. So you have virtually unlimited storage, but I.O. cost is something that you need to check here. So when you create the bucket, make sure you choose a tier. A, a tier, if cost is your main driver, you want to choose maybe single zone and make sure you monitor your IO operations so that you don't get eaten alive by those costs. And when I see this message here, I know that probably my disk is full already. So we're going to, we can't control Z. So we'll control Z and then kill the, the plotting process. So we'll kill dash nine the PID of the plotter and then make sure that it's gone and it is. Now if I do a DF-H you can see that my drive is completely filled and actually this is a 10 gig uh, local so I haven't resized this yet but my volume here is showing 100 but I, I need to resize it in the file system and I just haven't done that yet but if we DF I'm sorry if we LS we can see all the plot files locally and they're about 50 megs each before the process died. Now if we go here back to the bucket and list the objects we might see some files here. Not quite yet so everything is still zero bytes. So if we wanted to delete all these objects we would select this and uh, delete or we can just delete locally and I think that's the easier way so I will rm-f plot star and wait for that to complete and then once it synchronizes with s3 we should be good to go so next steps for me resize this to a hundred gig drive and figure out how to slow this down such that it plots less aggressively on the local machine and make sure to monitor my IO and s3 so that I don't get hit with heavy cost in that area. So anyway, hopefully this is a guide to get you started with plotting Chia in S3. And if you have any experience with this or any questions about it, feel free to let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.